like me, you really enjoy tools, and I definitely do, this little video might be of interest to you. I've loved tools ever since I've been a toddler, and I've collected a fair amount of tools over the years. And Years ago when I was a jeweler and a silversmith, these were my pride and joy. Beautiful pliers with box joints, precision made out of fantastic steel. And they're still in pristine condition almost. Yeah, this is surface rust. This is just cosmetic stuff, but they work beautifully. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't swap them for any other pliers. They're that good. And uh, they're still just as good as the day I bought them. Probably, in fact, better because after a while the box joint really wears into its, uh, how would you put it, serviceable shape? I don't know. It just wears in and it's silky smooth. And one of the other tools I used for many years was this. It's a sanding stick. It's a very crude tool. And all it is, is a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a wooden stick. And it works perfectly well. Nothing fundamentally wrong with it. After all, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong with something as simple as this? But the problem with it is, is that when you're working with it, the paper, well, it doesn't really stay on very well. And the stick's fairly long. And, well, all in all, all the different things I tried to improve this didn't really get me anywhere. And um, a while back, I sort of looked around to see if I could find anything a little bit more advanced than the sort of thing I've been using since the dark days, about 30 years ago. And uh, I went up the Thingiverse, and I saw some sanding sticks, but none of them really appealed to me. They had screws sticking out from them, and nuts and bolts all over the show, and didn't really speak to me. I wanted something that was sleeker, um, you know, just possibly a bit cooler. So I thought about the problem for a while and came up with these. And they've gone through several iterations. So um, what you're seeing really is a sort of a progression in a way. But the fundamental principle is identical. And whilst they're not tremendous improvement on the other sanding sticks out there, they might just appeal to you in the same way that they appeal to me. So let's have a look what makes up a sanding stick. It's really just two very simple shapes. It's the base and then this bit over here. I have no idea what you want to call it. I refer to it as the gripper. And all you do is is you pull this up and out comes the sanding paper. It's that simple. So you've got the base and in the base you've got two magnets and then you've got the gripper and in the gripper you've got two corresponding magnets and um, the files will be posted below and when you assemble them just make sure that you get your magnets <laughs> with the correct polarity lined up with these ones over here otherwise well things are not going to work the way you expect let's just put it that way so if we just pop it in into the hinge over here and do that voila you can see that the gripper is not going to go anywhere it's quite sturdy and it's very well held in place by the magnets so loading the sanding stick um, essentially is quite straightforward uh, it takes a little bit of learning I suppose there's a couple of wrinkles to it but it is quite straightforward you just pop your paper in over there I mean this is just a length of regular sandpaper sheet that I've cut a strip off so you take your strip of sandpaper and pop the end over there now all you do is you feed the gripper into the into that over there now you can if you want to pop the gripper on there for the moment as you pull this over like so add a bit of tension pick this up and drop it down and a bit of a squeeze depending on the thickness of your sandpaper and that holds it in place and that means it doesn't really move around it's actually quite sturdy and it'll accommodate thicker and thinner sandpaper obviously this is 
as an 80 grit paper it's going to be quite thick whereas if you have something like 600 or 1200 grit that's going to be considerably thinner so believe it or not it accommodates it even though it looks a little bit messy and it works quite well the advantage this particular design has is that there are no bits sticking out on top no screws no nuts no bolts it's all relatively sleek and it has a curved surface on this side a tightly radius surface on this side well tightly ish and of course at the bottom very nice flat surface so all in all it accommodates all of my sanding needs in a very nice sleek model without bits sticking out so you could sort of sand this way if you wanted to and it wouldn't have screws and twiddly knobs and what have you banging into the piece that you're working on now i've made two versions of this at the moment which is this particular one here and there's one more which is this one which is the hollow one and what particular advantage does the hollow version confer over the solid one to be perfectly frank um, no inherent advantage as such uh, possibly the fact that this part here becomes slightly more flexible which might be useful or not as the case may be um, but other than that it prints quicker and it uses less filament so that might be an advantage um, and it looks a bit cooler to my mind than this one um, other than that they're essentially the identical tool so I hope you've enjoyed this um, and then do all the regular YouTube things if you have.